Welcome to the grazing game, a contest where you try to guess which plant-eating animal will finish their meal the fastest. Our first two competitors are both great grazers. They are Billy the Buffalo and ZZ the Zebra. It's time for you to pick which one of these animals you think will finish their food the fastest. All right, grazers, get ready, get set, go! It looks like ZZ the Zebra is off to a really fast start. She's doing great! It seems like Billy the Buffalo chews a lot slower, but takes some really big bites. Who is going to finish first? All I know is that it's going to be close. Wow! Billy the Buffalo stages a huge comeback! The winner this time is Billy! Up next is a challenge between two very tall grazers. Um, a little higher, please. Yes, great, thank you. The challengers this time are Jesse Giraffe and Gerard Giraffe. Who do you choose to win? Ready. Set. Go! They're both munching away. Oh no, folks. It appears that a bee is distracting Gerard Giraffe. Okay, the bee is gone and Gerard Giraffe takes a huge bite. And he finishes all of the leaves on the branch. The winner this time is Gerard the Giraffe. This just in, folks. ZZ the Zebra has requested a rematch. For our final contest, the grazers again are Billy Buffalo and ZZ Zebra. Who do you think will finish their meal first? Okay, grazers, ready. Set. Go! They're both munching away. Will Billy the Buffalo come back once again? And ZZ Zebra finishes first. She is the winner. We hope you've had a good time playing the grazing game.
Joseph was the favorite, and he was an outcast. Joseph was a dreamer, but taken as a prisoner. Joseph was the chosen, and he was alone. Thought he was forgotten, waiting for the time to come. Joseph. covering the blood. But before we get started, I want to pray, all right? Pray with me. Father God, we thank you for being such an amazing God. And I thank you, Lord, that you are our teacher. You said you will teach us and we shall have great, great peace. Today in this session, teach us something new. Teach us something interesting and be glorified. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, let's get started. So today we are talking about the white soldiers. White soldiers? Sister Chrissy, what do soldiers have to do with blood? I'm glad you asked. On the next slide, I have a picture of how our blood looks under a microscope. Microscope. You ever heard of a microscope? A microscope is a device that you look through and it makes things look so large. It magnifies things. I like that word, magnify. It magnifies things. It makes things look bigger. 
know the Bible warns us, also, um, it, talks, it talks about us magnifying the Lord, making God bigger above everything else. But let's stay on the topic. So if you look in a microscope, it will magnify the way our blood really looks. Look at that picture. You see, our blood has white blood cells and red blood cells. Did you know that? I didn't know that when I was your age. I didn't know I had white blood cells because when I look at my blood, what color is it? Red. But if you look under the microscope, you can see there's something more than just your red blood cells in there. And there, there, there they are in that picture. Hey, looking at your picture, do you think there are more red blood cells or more white blood cells? Correct. There are definitely more red blood cells. But today, our topic are the white, is the white blood cells. Okay. So let me tell you about these white blood cells. Do you see that picture there? That white blood cell has a sword. Do you wanna know why the white blood cell is holding a sword in that cartoon? Because that's his job. The white blood cells only exist in our blood for the purpose of destroying viruses and germs and any invasions that will try to enter into our body and make us sick. That awesome God put a blood cell that fights inside of our body here I have some um, baked candy beans these are not white blood cells but I'm using them for this example so if you look here there are red blood cells and I have a few white blood cells which one has which which one has more Yes, there are more red blood cells. This is the way your blood looks if you are normal, if you are healthy, you're not sick at all. More red blood cells than white blood cells. Now, the moment an invasion, something, some type of germ, something gets inside of your body, all of a sudden, the white blood cells begin to multiply. White blood cells attack! They come on. They go inside and they go straight to the source of whatever it is that's trying to make you sick. Isn't that amazing? Did you know that was going on in your body? Anytime you're sick and sometimes you might um, get a fever, you might, your parents or your teacher might say, hey, do you have a fever? If you have a fever, that's a sign that the white blood cells are in that body working. There used to be just a few of them, but all of a sudden they begin to multiply themselves and they go along and they begin to attack any type of invasion, anything that's trying to cause you to get sick, any diseases, more white blood cells. They just keep coming and coming until the job is done. Your blood is super, super, super cool. Did you know that? Okay, so that's enough. Well, look, now, do you think there are more white than red? Look like they're about even. But guess what? If need be, the white blood cells will keep multiplying themselves. Let me tell you what happened one time I went to the doctor. And Sister Chrissy was feeling good. Do you hear me? I just went to the doctor for an appointment. They did some blood work. And I went home. They didn't have the results of the blood work. And about a week later, they called and they said, hey, um, Chrissy, I think you need to make an appointment and go in to the doctor. But they didn't know the night before I went to the emergency room at the hospital because I wasn't feeling well. I was so tired. Something is wrong. My stomach was hurting. But a week before that, that doctor appointment I had, it showed that my white blood cells had shot up. And the doctor was able to see under the microscope, something's not right. My body was attacking a disease or something that I didn't even know was there. And after a while, I started getting not feeling well. But before I even knew something was wrong, my blood, my blood was doing the work of fighting off that disease. Isn't that awesome? Well, found out something was wrong with my stomach. I'm all good. The doctor gave me some medicine, and here I am. But because of the results of that, that blood work, the doctor was able to say, hey, something's up. 
Sometimes you don't even know. Sometimes you might not ever know that something might be going on. There might be an attack on your body. But God created you with an army, an army of white soldiers in your blood to fight off anything that might try to harm his child. God is so awesome. He loves us. I have that little red dot in that soldier. For the blood, there's power in the blood, and there's power in your blood. Right, so on the next slide, remember, white blood cells multiply as soon as you're being attacked with a sickness. Remember that, okay? On the next thing, you see a scab. Have you ever been riding your bike or maybe walking and you fall? <laughs> oh, it hurts, and you scrape your arm, and soon it forms a scab. You ever had a scab? Yeah, I had a scab too, but I'm so curious. I used to always want to pick, pick, pick the scab. Don't do that. Whenever a scab forms on your body, the white blood, the moment you fail, the moment you became injured, the white blood cells, they race to that area of where the injury happened and they're fighting. <sighs> You're not gonna get in this body. You're not gonna make her sick. You're not gonna make him sick. The white blood cells are doing their job. And there's a scab that forms. You don't know, but the white blood cells are right under there fighting to stop you from getting an infection. Now, on the next slide, you see the white blood cell fighting against that germ. And there's this scab, and someone picked the scab off. Repeat after me. Leave the scab alone. Again, leave the scab alone. If you pull the scab too early, you will see this pulse. Little white milky looking like slime underneath the scab. Do you know what that white stuff is, that pulse is? It's a collection of your white blood cells that rush there to form to stop your body from getting an infection, from letting that bacteria, whatever, comes inside your body to infect you, okay? So leave the scab alone because the white blood cells are still working and you don't want to take it off and they have to start working again. But after a while, the scab is going to fall off. And did you, what happened when the scab falls off? It's smooth. It's, uh, what happened? The sore is gone. When that scab falls off, brand new skin is made underneath where the scab was. That means the white blood cells, they've done their job. They left the area, no pulse. There's no liquid coming out because they did their job. Isn't God amazing? He made it so that our blood can heal our own body. We have the best God ever. That's a miracle. But remember, leave the scab alone. Let the white blood cells do their job. So now, let's talk about that sickness, disease, and germs on this next slide. There they are. Our body recognizes those things as an enemy. That's right. Sickness is an enemy to your body. It can harm you. It can kill you. Disease, that's an enemy to your body. And germs, that's an enemy. That's why now it's important to wash your hands. Do your part. Make sure you keep all sicknesses and diseases all away from you. Because if not, that's okay. You have something in your blood. What's that? those white blood cells that will fight on your behalf. Now, disease, sickness, and germs are an enemy to your body. Enemy, enemy, enemy. I heard that word before. Who's our enemy? That low, wait, Sister Lillian at our children's ministry, she called him that low down, dirty dog devil. That's right, he's the enemy. And we have so much more power over that enemy. But he has a job too just like our white blood cells have a job. What's the, what's the job of the enemy? The Bible tells us, do you know? To kill, steal, and to destroy. That's the enemy's job. Now, the germ's job is to try to harm you just like the enemy, the, our, our, that's low down, I cannot, 
I don't like him. See, God give us a way to defeat the enemy and God's given us white blood cells to defeat these, um, these germs that try to enter our body. No worries. We have the white blood cells to fight against those diseases. And we have the blood of Jesus that causes us to have victory over the enemy. That's right. Even after your white blood cells have been fighting on your behalf and you're still sick. Now it's time for us to pull on the blood of our Savior. Savior. He saves us. So here's the question. Why do you think God gave us this army of white blood cells in our blood? Think about it. God, why did you put a whole army of cells in my blood? Why would God do that? Why do you think God did that? Yeah, he definitely wants our bodies to fight against disease. Well, why do you think God made our body to fight against disease and any germs that would try to harm us? Why did he create our bodies like that? Because on the next slide, he wants you in good health. Let me see your muscles. Make another muscle. God wants us strong and healthy. That's why he designed our body to fight and war against any enemies that will try to defeat us. He loves us. He loves us. He doesn't want us sick. If anyone is sick, they can't say, oh, I guess God wants me sick. Not true. If God wanted you sick, he wouldn't have put any white soldiers in your blood. God does not want us sick. Sickness does not come from him. Sickness comes from the enemy, the enemy. And even after your white blood cells have done their job and try to fight against all sickness, you can then, pro you can then proclaim the blood of Jesus. Guys, that blood is so important because it bought us out of the hand of the enemy. Say that with me. The blood of Jesus has per I'm going to say purchase. Say this with me. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus has purchased me, has purchased me out of the hand of the enemy out of the hand of the enemy. So even when sickness becomes stubborn and it doesn't want to leave, say, hold on, devil. God has sent his son and he shed his blood to purchase me. That means redeem me. And the devil has to back off because he knows he has no right attacking our body. We have the blood of Jesus and it purchased us. It bought us out of the hand of the enemy. We are not the enemy's children. We are God's children. And God loves us so much that he let his son shed his blood and that blood is so powerful that it bought us from the hand of the enemy. So when the enemy attacks your body or attacks anything, you can say, back off. I have the blood of Jesus and it has purchased me. You have no right to be touching my body, to be touching my family. Anything that you see that's not of God, where the enemy might be trying to kill, steal, or destroy, recognize, oh, that's from the devil. I have the blood of Jesus and I have been bought from the hand of the enemy. You have no right to be near me. I am healed. And that reminds me of our scripture this week. On the next slide, by his stripes, we are healed. By his stripes, we are healed. By his, who is his? Whose stripes made us healed? Jesus stripes. Guys, look at his back there. You see a few stripes there? It looked like the blood has been wiped away on that picture. But he was whooped so many times and with every stripe, pow his skin was broken pow his skin was broken that was another stripe another stripe and all of that blood that came out while he was being whooped was for our healing so if you're sick and the white blood cells has done his job and you're still feeling sick say hey by his stripes we are healed that's isaiah 53 and 5 and sometimes you have to remind that stank dog devil that and you believe it you say that by his stripes I am healed sickness go in Jesus name and it has to obey you know why it has to obey because of the blood God used that blood to purchase you 
out of the hand of the enemy. It's called being redeemed. Can you say that word with me? Redeemed. I am redeemed. That means you have been bought and the devil has no right to touch you or do anything to you because you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Not only are we healed by his stripes, by his blood. The next slide. We're forgiven, boys and girls. All of your sins are forgiven because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Are your sins forgiven? Yes. Why? Because of the blood. That's right. We are bought, purchased from the hand of the enemy because of the blood of Jesus. And because of the blood of Jesus, all of your sins are washed away. That's something that you have to choose to believe in. That's something you have to say with your mouth. I believe God sent his son to purchase me out of the hand of the enemy. I believe Jesus died for my sin. He shed his blood that my sins might be forgiven. And by his stripes, I am healed. These are the benefits of those who believe. This is a benefit of being God's child. He heals all of our disease, every single disease. If it has a name, cold, cancer, um, headache, fever, is it, if it has a name, it has to leave because of the name of Jesus. Why is Jesus' name so important? Because of his blood. You think your blood can do some great things by fighting. Imagine what the blood of Jesus has done. It has saved the entire universe, the entire world for those who have become God's children. So if you're not God's child, you can become one right now. Do you want to become God's child? If you do, say this prayer with me. Here we go. Dear God, thank you for loving me and for sending your son to die for my sins. I am sorry for my sins and receive Jesus Christ as my savior. Now as your child, I turn my entire life over to you. Amen. Woo! You have a right to the blood of Jesus. You are God's child. You are forgiven. You are healed. By his stripes, you were healed. Guys, I hope you had fun today. I had a blast knowing about the power that's working in my blood and the power that I can proclaim with my tongue. Remember, guys, it's enough to know it. It's not enough to know it. You have to say it with your mouth. By his stripes. I am healed. And if you feel like sickness is still staying on you, say, hold on. I have been purchased or redeemed out of the hand of the enemy. Sickness, go. And Satan has, the devil, that low down dirt, he has to recognize that because he know he received that blood and he has to back off. And if he's not backing off, you better say it and tell him. Okay? Love you guys. See you next time. Sure.